morning. You know what? I have not had any Alto Intenso for a while. I've got a fairly large cup here. Let me read you about Alto Intenso. Hush, puppy. Oh, dear. Somebody must be walking by in the backyard. Sorry. Okay. This blend offers you the robust richness with same in-cup caffeine levels as our existing Virtuo coffees, thanks to a blend of regular and decaffeinated roast and ground coffee. So, even though this is a big old capsule, it does not have more caffeine than the usual 7.77 ounce capsules. Grayson! Well, when the person or the cat or whatever it is goes away, he'll stop. Why we love it. We blend three unique coffees to give Alto Intenso its steadfast, strong presence. A washed Robusta from Guatemala is the pillar of strength in this Nespresso Intenso. Its thick crema and lingering bitterness meet the sweet malty notes of Costa Rican Arabica. Oh dear. Grayson, would you stop? And if you read this. Grayson. Grayson. Hey, let's see what's going on there. I'm sorry. Grayson, honestly, oh, there's something bothering him out here. You know, there's a little hollow in the woods back there and cats frequently gather there. Or are you barking at your own reflection that you can see, but I can't see? Okay. I'd, oh, okay. There's a sort of weed bush back there, but it's got flowers on it. Oh, yeah, those are the good-smelling flowers, too. Okay, well, Grayson, do you think you can wait, please? Anyway, oh, sorry, wet hair. Just got out of the shower. Okay, well, back to coffee. Sorry, this is <laughs> this is sometimes morning at my house. Um, yes, so on the box, okay, you've got a side that tells you the brand and the name, and it usually also tells you the intensity on a lot of the coffees. Oh, good morning, you guys who are watching. And then... You've got a side that tells you, you know, why we love it, and it describes the coffee. And you've got, oh, here's the intensity, duh. Okay, Alto Intenso uh, tells you how big a cup it makes, 14 ounces. And this is an intensity of seven. Okay, and then there's a side of the box that gives you, you know, um, how many grams of coffee are in a capsule and the contents of the capsules and this one the contents of the box also this one says 10 capsules of a blend of regular and decaffeinated roast and ground coffee okay so um and it tells you you know how it was decaffeinated and anyhow so this is helpful, you know, if you want to know if you're getting half and half or what. Of course, I don't know what, um, obviously, since this is a, makes a 14-ounce cup, it's probably about half and half, half regular, half decaf. But um, you can always, I think you can look up online or call the Nespresso 800 number and ask them how much caffeine is in a particular capsule because they vary but just because this makes twice as much as a regular coffee it does not have twice as much caffeine which is what you would think that it has twice as much it's got the regular amount oh that sun coming in is getting me all heated up here 
Okay. Oh, isn't this nice? I said, you know, I usually use my vase to keep creamers in, but yesterday a friend and her granddaughter came around and gave her friends roses. So I'm getting to use my vase for something else. <laughs> what it was intended to be used for. Okay. So, enough talking. I've got a little bit of milk in here. I am, I'm going to talk about perfectionism in just a minute. But the coffee and the dog all ended up taking longer. Okay, so. Got this pretty flowery cup this morning. And um, I'm going to let it run while I talk about perfectionism, okay? Um, I guess, I, you know, maybe I need to face in this direction so I can kind of keep an eye on things because, you know, it could be overflowing and I, I won't even see. In fact, I'll let you help me keep an eye on it. How do I do this here? Oh, there we go. How about that? Do it from this angle? Yeah. Okay, now we can both watch it. So perfectionism, placing unrealistically high standards on yourself or others is a sure way to increase your anxiety. Because none of us are capable of perfection, high standards have the effect of setting ourselves up for failure. Wow. Whether you learned perfectionistic expectations from your parents or whether you see them as a part of your own personality, these expectations are anxiety igniting thoughts. Yes. So here's your perfectionism assessment. Okay. And again, I've got eight statements I'm going to read and you kind of mentally keep track of uh, whether you agree with a lot of them or maybe not so many. <clears throat> I have high standards for myself and usually hold myself to them. I usually have a right way to do something and it is difficult to vary from that approach. People consider me extremely conscientious and careful as a worker. When I am wrong, I am very embarrassed and ashamed. <coughs> Hush, puppy! Okay, and now am I going to let this go? Oh, it's shutting off. Hey! Okay, sometimes I've got a good eye. When others are watching me, I am concerned that I'm going to humiliate myself. I almost never perform at a level that I am satisfied with. I have a hard time letting go of mistakes I make. I feel I have to be hard on myself or I won't be good enough. Okay, so... These are qualities of somebody who tends to be a perfectionist and doing, you know, thinking these kind of thoughts too much can ignite anxiety. So it says, if you agreed with many of these statements, you may have difficulties with perfectionism. You may have difficulties, okay? and will benefit from cortex-based interventions, including cognitive restructuring and mindfulness. Now, uh, you know, some of these terms may sound like, you know, what the heck is that? Um, but go ahead and Google it or look at the book um, that a lot of these, that these, I think all of them came from. Um, Rewiring Your Anxious Brain by Pittman and Carl. Or maybe it's Carly. It's K-A-R-L-E. Okay, so are you a perfectionist? You know, I didn't used to think that I was a perfectionist. And interestingly, let me get this coffee off of here. 
interestingly, my counselor pointed out to me that maybe I was <laughs> about certain areas. Hey, Grayson. I'm going to try to give this a stir here. Now, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, but Grayson was sick yesterday. He had eaten too much the night before. Let me take a sip of this. Mm. Oh, it's just a nice full-bodied cup of coffee, and there's a lot in there. And I'm going to sip some of it off so I can put some skinny syrup in to sweeten it just a little. Anyway, so my counselor pointed out to me that some of the ways I had to, of thinking, um, I was holding myself to awfully high standards. And um, <coughs> when I didn't measure up to some of the standards, some of the things I thought I should be able to do, I just, you know, I didn't feel right. And it seemed... Um, well, okay, you know how I, uh, one of the things I read in there, there's a right way to do something, and I try to do it that way. I was brought up, Grayson, come here. I was brought up in a family where we did things the right way, and the, you know, I was never told that other families did things the wrong way. <laughs> I was just told we did things the right way. This was the right way to do things. And the implication was, if other people are not doing it this way, they must be doing it wrong, right? <laughs> so um, as I got out into the world, you know, and I had more experiences, I came to realize that in fact with most things, there are many different ways. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, Right, Grayson? He's standing here by me. I am going to end this soon and take him out, you know, since I don't know if he's still sick or not. Anyhow, and if he is, I don't want him to be sick in the house. So, um, I would have expectations of myself. Uh, for example, I was always considered such a conscientious and hard worker and you know, if you need it done, go to Sylvia. She'll get it done, and she'll get it done right. And, um, you know, I had trouble trusting other people to do things because I knew I would do it right. Now, I know that that is not an unusual thought. There are a lot of people that think that way. And um, I've gotten over it. I've come to realize that, hey, other people may have well, they may even have a better way of doing something. And it's not so much a matter of a right way and a wrong way, but it's just different ways of getting things done. And you know what? Most things in life, if they're not done um, conscientiously and by hard workers, they usually get done anyway. And if they don't get done, you know, the world is pretty much not going to come to an end. I've become more laid back, and I really wanted that in my life because I knew that I had, too, there were too many things that I felt like had to be a certain way or else I didn't feel comfortable. So, yeah, you know, I was a perfectionist. So this is something to think about. Do you have things in your life where if they are not done a certain way, or within a certain time period, or by certain people, stuff like that, you know, does it bother you? Does it jangle you? Does it upset you? Does it ignite anxiety? Well, I'm a little distracted this morning by this puppy, so um, I am going to go ahead and take him out just to be on the safe side. And then I'm going to come back. Mm, and enjoy my coffee. I hope that you have a really good day. And I hope that if you're finding that some of these anxiety igniting 
thoughts and qualities that I've been talking about. Hope if you're finding that, yes, you know, if you're saying, oh gosh, that's me, you know, I tend to do that. I hope that you see it as a challenge to try to do something about it because, you know, it's not so much the things that happen to us, the things that confront us in this world that determine our happiness. It's how we respond to those things. And you can go, oh, no, I'm a perfectionist. I'm a worrier. I'm obsessive, or, you know, whatever it is. Or tomorrow, I'm going to read about catastrophizing. Oh, I tend to catastrophize things. Oh, I'm just a mess. No, you have the choice of saying, wow, I do some of these things. Let me go ahead and find out how I can change this. Life is an exciting adventure, and so much of it actually happens inside of you if you will take on the challenge. Okay, I better take this doggy out. God bless you.